Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Traders Rahap Up podcast. Puya here, just coming in with a quick message to let y'all know that we were unable to interview both of the banished and murdered contestants today. Unfortunately, we weren't able to secure an interview with Kuzi today, but we are planning to get that interview sometime in the week upcoming. So worry not, we should be getting that interview at some point. But for now, enjoy this incredible conversation we had with May. She's a lot of fun, and myself and Scally had a good time talking to her. Enjoy. Take care. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Traders Wrap Up Podcast. We're here today to talk to one of our favorite contestants of the season that we had a joy of watching. Of course, I'm your host, Puyas Amikili. With me is Brian Scally, and joining us is May. May, how are you feeling at this hour? Doing pretty good. It's been a while. Um, kind of sad that I left uh, the game at that point because I kept... I wanted to play <laughs> some more oh uh, may yeah you were a really fun character on this season i feel like very involved in quite a bit of stuff but before everything was going down they were selecting the traders now i assume i know the answer but i'm assuming you would have rather played this game as a trader than a faithful or how do you feel about that looking back yeah absolutely i wanted to go into this game um playing as a trader i hated being a faithful i just felt so you know helpless and useless like because you don't have any control whatsoever you are at risk of getting banished and murdered at the same time so you got to watch your front and your back <laughs> um what was your experience with the traders before while the game started had you watched some of the other franchises um, I was aware of the US version just being a big, big Bravo fan. Um, but I didn't actually watch any of the seasons until um I was asked to participate and then I binged everything. <laughs> there we go. And so coming in, um, obviously there was the split between like the people who had done reality TV people before and the people who had not. Did you find yourself working with the other people who had done reality TV with uh early, or were you mostly like who were you working with pretty early on? Uh, early on, like, honestly, I, um, I only recognized Rick, to be honest with you. And then I learned uh, that everyone else had been on TV as well. Um, and then I didn't expect anyone to recognize me either, um, unless you're like a big fan of food TV. Uh, but like, I was just willing to open, like, I was open to working with everybody. Um, my initial connections were Gurpyar and Dom. And of course, like... <laughs> All my connections got the boot pretty early, so I felt pretty alone later on in the game. Yeah, we definitely do see that by the time your journey was coming close to an end, especially in the last episode. Now, in the early goings, everyone goes, votes out Colin, and then you had a comment where you had said, yeah, I feel like a lot of us had names that we did not bring up because you don't want to be the first person to chuck a name out there. Who were the initial names you had on your mind? Well, I honestly thought, like, who would you choose if you were producing the show to choose to be a trader? I was like, Rick, for sure. Rick would be such an entertaining trader. He's so well known. He's been on TV for a long time. Um, so he was always on my mind. I was yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely came up. I remember that one. You and him had a little bit of a back and forth. Was it mostly the metagaming of that that had you leaning on Rick? Or what else was he doing that really had you so suspicious? It's because he was, he, I feel like he was the, the main force behind um, pushing Colin's name out there. I don't, like, I think he was the first person to mention Colin and then it, like, everyone else got on board because nobody else had, like, a name either. So it's like, hey, let's hide behind this person's name as long as it's not us, right? So, but then, yeah, he was going pretty hard and he, he like, we had a couple conversations where he's like, right, it's, it's Colin, it's Colin, right, May? I'm like, I don't know, right? I don't, actually don't feel like it was Colin, but again, it was the only name out there that you can like, kind of like use and not put any heat on yourself. We and that's kind of where we start seeing I want to call it a rivalry between the two of you where you were the captain of your team for the challenge and then your team loses and Rick's like, you know what? May was throwing May didn't want me to be safe. How did you feel hearing that? I was just actually gobsmacked because like after the challenge, he was like, oh, great job, May, great job. You did such a good job as a team captain. And like the first time I heard that he was like saying that I sabotaged was when Kevin brought it up. And I was just like, what? What is going on? Like, you didn't have to say that I did a good job if you didn't think so. I didn't care, you know. 
And yeah, no, but I ran my butt off that day. You guys didn't get to see, but I took off my shoes and ran in wet socks the whole time. And like, that's not what (laughs) a person who throws a challenge would do. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, I still not really sure on the logic of the throwing challenge uh, speculation, but it's okay. Um, I don't know. Did that, or even I remember in after the Colin vote, I believe you were pretty frustrated that you had gone with the mob basically and had not thrown out names that you were actually suspecting. How did that change your gameplay for the rest of the season? Really? Um, I went with the polar opposite, so I went really hard. (laughs) (laughs) What I wanted to do going into the game was like, you know, like stay quiet. Um, But yeah, just after the Colin thing, I'm like, I don't want to be a coward. I'm here to play the game, so I'm going to play. So yeah, I totally blew up my game after that. And then I spiraled after I didn't vote for Mel B at the round table. I was like, oh no, I'm not going to make it to the end anyways. Might as well just like, you know, mess it up for everybody else. (laughs) Um, so then when Rick get, uh, gets banished and gets up and declares that he is a faithful, what is running through your mind in that moment? Actually, I was really mad at him that day because he basically called me a loser. He was like, did you win or lose your season? I'm like, why do you call me a loser? I know I lost my seasons. But he cleared that up because uh, he told me after we met up um, for brunch, he was like, oh, I was just thinking his theory was uh, they would have chosen a traitor that didn't win their season of a reality TV show because you get the redemption arc. So, yeah. But also he went personal with me. I'm like, Rick, that's not cool. I want you to go home even if you aren't a traitor because you were mean to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> a, a very entertaining moment for sure but i can understand how that would be frustrating yeah, now I can understand like as a faithful like another faithful even if you know they're a faithful is just as bad for your game as a traitor if they're gunning for you because they can also take you out during banishment mm-hmm. and so how was that like affecting your game moving forward like realizing that part of the strategy because there's so many people that are in the game really thinking like we're only here targeting traders and once you have that realization of like oh, this is more about who's on my side do you think that a lot of people were playing like that or was it frustrating going up against the typical like we're only here to target traders of the game Uh, I think most people were playing, um, like, especially with their alliances, like they didn't care if they got out of Faithful. They they wouldn't say it publicly, but Mm -hmm. as long as it's not you, like that's another day in the game for you, right? So yeah, like midpoint for me, like when I voted Trevon, I didn't think he was a traitor at all. Uh, It's just when we went into that round table, um, it was me between me and him, but then it switched to fierce for some reason. And um, yeah, I was going to vote for him regardless, even though I know I knew he was a faithful because I'm not going to vote for myself. If I don't vote for him, that's a higher chance of me going home. Right. So. So at that point, who would you say you had as an alliance uh, for yourself in that during that vote? During that vote, I literally uh, maybe just had was Dom still there. Yes, Dom was still there. Yeah, like he was the only other person I trusted at that point. And then um, after Melissa was put on death row, like me and her formed a connection because like, we're like, yeah, it's Koozie. And she actually agreed with me. I'm like, okay, we can work together on this. Okay. And so when you hear that Koozie has uh, dropped Mike's name, you decide to go ahead and tell him, was that fully like all right let's get koozie out because she's a traitor let's uh, this is actually like helpful to my game of me and koozie aren't really you know on the same side right now like what was the thought process and how did you think that went in the moment well like i personally wasn't part of that conversation like maybe koozie sure, sure. and i maybe did not have like uh, we had <laughs> like two gameplay conversations throughout the entire time i was there i knew she was someone that wasn't working with me but like during a lot of the round tables um it wasn't shown but like she would be reprimanding us she'd be like you guys need to do better i'm like you just voted out a person that you said like i know you're not a faithful or I know you're a faithful, I know you're not a traitor, but then you voted them out anyway. So why would you do that? Only a traitor would do that. She did it for a lot of the round tables. So that's why she was always on my radar. So I'm like, no, 100%, I know she's a traitor. And she just kept lecturing us at the round tables where she's like, you guys need to start playing. I'm like, 
you're not playing. You're you're playing as a trader, and I know you are. Um, but yeah, so I went to go tell Mike because, like, hey, Mike, who's he saying your name? And I want to rally enough boats to get her out tonight. So yeah, for sure, I I threw out that bit of information, hoping it would sway him to vote her out at the roundtable. Yeah, it did feel like in the last couple of roundtables we had that more and more to us, it seemed like you were on a complete island with where you were on the outs of the rest of the house. Were you actually on the up? Did it feel that way for you in the moment as well? No, like I was still having conversations with everybody, but I knew the conversations weren't like leading anywhere because I, I knew the names that were going around. Like I, I knew which the I knew which where the votes were going into going into the round table, but like. So that's why, like, I didn't try to banish Koozie um, the night that Kevin went home because it's like nobody's going to say her name with me. So what's the point? So um, I thought I had gathered enough votes. I had talked to Donna. I talked to Mickey. And I thought Mike for sure was going to vote for Koozie, too. So that's why I went so hard for her at that round table, because I thought I had the votes to take her out. But I didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so after that round table, when you and Koozie have gone at it a little bit and you're coming away, not necessarily on an island, but like uh, thinking you're pretty sure Koozie's a traitor, you're publicly so against her. Do you feel like, all right, maybe I'm kind of safe from this murder, though, because it's been so public me versus her? Or did you think like, all right, now she has some real motivation to take me out of the game? Um, I definitely thought there's both scenarios would have made sense. But I also knew like because it got personal, I think she wanted to get get the shot at me first before that before she, I can get the shot at her so I think she was driven by kind of revenge and that's why she was <laughs> banished the next day um, I think she was a little bit too overconfident that like she was able to you know sway other people like no I was framed but at that point there wasn't enough of us in the game to to kind of be like oh no I'm being framed like when um Magic Mike murdered a uh, group because there were still so many of us in the game that he can hide behind more people but no like your sore thumb sticking out now that mm -hmm. i went so hard for you publicly and then i'm gone the next day it's easy we heard on last night's episode in passing it almost felt like that they had said that there was an agreement that if anyone was going to get recruited to be a trader they were going to say no flat out no would that have been the case for you no, like halfway through the game, I was like, oh, these these faithfuls are making me so mad. I hope I get recruited because I'm going to murder them because they're pissing me off. <laughs> you know, I would 100% have said yes, and I would have thrown the traitors under the bus for sure. That's what I was going to say is how do you think you would have worked with Koozie and Mike as their fellow trader? I would have worked with um, Mike because it was easy because I was already saying Koozie's name, right? So mm. I would just stay on the same track and it's not going to look suspicious for me that I'm like, oh, wait, why isn't she not saying Koozie anymore? I would have teamed up with Mike and be like, let's get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so if the traders come back, if Kareen hits you up and says, May, it's time for round two, would you be willing to give this game another shot? I don't know. Yeah, well, like, it's the game is different each time, right? It's not a consistent game, like, mm -hmm. every single time you play. You're playing against people, and people are always different. You can't um, predict how they're going to act. I don't know. It was really stressful, though. I'd, I'd say maybe for now. I wouldn't say 100% yes. Yeah, just put it in the contract. Like, uh, you got to tap my shoulder in that first round table. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you say that, then for sure everyone knows who you traitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> no, May, it's been, it was an absolute delight to watch you play. We really felt like the two of us uh, last week when we were talking, we really did think Travon was the one that was going to get murdered and you would have another day in the manor. Unfortunately, that didn't come to be. But we're glad we got a chance to talk to you. And, per, you know, selfishly, we hope we see you back on our TV screens at some point oh in the God. future. Like, I'm seriously not that chaotic in real life, you guys. It was just a really <laughs> stressful situation. <laughs> well, well. Yeah, please well, continue to be on TV. <laughs> yeah, because May, I came into the season being unfamiliar with your work on on Masters of Chef, as they would say, and <laughs> having watched it, I was like, "What did May do on Master Chef? I need to check that out now." I didn't do anything. I was so calm. I was so normal on Master Chef. <laughs> well, uh. either way, it was a delight. 
Thanks so, so much, you guys. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your time.